and welcome to the Jazz McKay podcast extravaganza here, right here on Kerncast. We're here generally every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, uh, had some things that, you know, doctor's appointments and whatnot this past uh, Tuesday that uh, prevented me from uh, from being able to be with you uh, Tuesday afternoon, but I'm here today. Love that Larry having uh, uh, some uh, some personal things he's got to take care of today, so he won't be with us. But uh, but Goose and I are here, right, Goose? Yes, I'm here. Amen. Um, I'm here I, somewhere. Where do where do where do we start? How about with your mic? Is your mic working? It's working now. I just very had to turn good. it up a little bit. Very very good. It's, okay. Um, Ohio. I guess they're done counting votes in Ohio, and the Republican won in the special election in that congressional seat in Ohio. I thought this was a blue wave. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he won by a total of 1,754 votes. It's now pretty much official, but guess what they found? Goose, you want to take a guess at what they found in Ohio? Um, um, um. They found more votes. More votes. That's right. Oh, here what do I win? What do I win? What do I win? From the <laughs> Daily Wire, with all the votes counted in Ohio's 12th congressional district, they had a special election this past Tuesday. Republican candidate Troy Balderson narrowly defeated Democrat challenger Danny O'Connor. The margin of 202,521 votes cast gave uh, favor to Balderson by 1,754. However, wait, wait, don't touch your chickens before they've hatched. Ohio election officials, apparently last night, found 588 previously uncounted votes. Where did that come from? Where on earth could those vote, where could those ballots have been? Uh, did they turn up in uh, Al Franken's uh, 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 backseat, <laughs> the, the trunk of Al Franken's car? Uh, Ohio election officials found 588 previously uncounted votes in a Columbus suburb. Where were they? We don't know. Was it the back of a 7-Eleven? Do we know where the votes were found? Apparently they found them, though. And after tabulating them, guess what? O'Connor picked up 190 votes. He still is not the winner in Ohio during this, as, uh, as Goose put it, this blue wave that, that's, uh, that's coming through. The votes were from a portion of one voting location that had not been processed into the tabulation system, said Franklin County Board of Elections uh, head to the Cincinnati Enquirer. So they keep finding votes. Did you see this, the, the meme? I love this meme lately. I saw this on uh, Facebook. And it was Hillary Clinton standing in front of her constituents and asking them to vote in the uh, November election for Democrats. She was standing in a graveyard. <laughs> How funny is that? That is the best. But, uh, but uh, yeah, but uh, vote, it, there's no voter fraud. There's no voter fraud. Maybe the Russians were at work in, in Ohio. Do you think possibly we could have... Maybe there were some Russians somewhere around I, I i saw another meme today on facebook that i had to share that was hysterical it was it, it was a woman crying in what looks to, to be maybe a doctor's office a psychologist or psychiatrist and he says i'm sorry but i have to ask you this those russians you see are they in the room with us right now <laughs> story for you this afternoon. Another one. Another one. Twice as many ballots. We hear these stories every election, don't we? Every election. Twice as many ballots as the number of registered voters were cast in a northeastern Georgia district during the state's primary elections in May. Get this. Twice as many, according to the official numbers from the Georgia Secretary of State, 670 votes were cast in Habersham County's Mud Creek Precinct. Okay? 670 votes. Unfortunately, there's only 276 registered voters in that district. Oh, my God. <laughs> in a bizarre turn of events, the number of registered voters then changed from the 276 number, this is on the website of the Secretary of State's office in Georgia. Overnight, 
What's this news broke uh, earlier this week? Overnight, the number of registered voters in this particular Mud Creek, I love that name. Where are you from? Mud Creek, Georgia. (laughs) In a bizarre twist to the story, the 276 registered voters in this Georgia precinct in Mud Creek, Georgia, suddenly changed overnight on the Secretary of State's website from 276 to 3,704. Oh, wow. How does that happen? Uh, it's called new math. Is, is that what it is? Yeah. It's the new math, folks. <laughs> That's what it is. Goose with us this afternoon on the uh, Jazz McKay Show. How things have been going for you, Goose? Are you... Uh, things have been crazy. I just we just got a matter of fact before we went on the air today. I got yeah. I got a call from um, uh, my neuro, son's neurologist. Uh, they're oh, trying right. to set up an appointment for us to come down and do another set of battery tests for him. So, um, but that's you know that's probably the that's great, that's great news. It is great news. Uh, I there because uh, we're trying to get him in either sometime during the end of this month or uh, the beginning of next month to get him in for surgery. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and uh, tell, to you, tell everybody, uh, about my it. son has a non-cancerous brain tumor. Uh, the the uh, uh, emphasizing on non-cancerous, uh-huh. but it does cause him seizures. Uh, luckily, uh, the last three or four months, he's been on the right medication, so he hasn't had the seizures. Good. But where how old is he? He's fifteen. He'll be uh, sixteen in just a, oh. next month, actually. Bless his heart. Actually, a month. Uh, from the month from tomorrow. From tomorrow. So, what uh, oncologist uh, or I'm sorry, neurologist do you see? Well, we're seeing a couple of them in Kaiser. Uh, one is Dr. Sarko, and another I can't remember her name off the top of my head right now. But uh, but uh, he's been getting uh, ever since this started. We've been getting on the right path, and and um, they've just noticed it, that that it's that tough, thing. isn't it? It's crazy. Um, it's tough. I mean, I'm going through a lot of the same kind of thing with Laura. We uh, we got a call, um, actually it was late Tuesday, that they had uh, scheduled an MRI for her spine. You know, she has torticollis, which causes her head to be bent over and down, tremendous pain mm-hmm. in her neck. She sees a neurologist who gives her Botox injections in the neck to relieve all of this, mm-hmm. but it's not working, so uh, he put in a request, and you know how insurance companies are, they yeah. don't want to pay for things like MRIs and, and whatnot if they can avoid it. We finally got the call that uh, she could come in, so we took her and uh, we went in yesterday to uh, Kern Radiology, which is over uh, on San Dimas, right near the Memorial Hospital. Mm-hmm. And uh, they did the MRI over there. And I can't say enough good things about the folks that, that took care of her and took care of us there uh, yesterday. Right. They were terrific. Uh, you know, I just, uh, what we've been going through, what, what Goose and his family have been going through uh, with health issues, um, the less the government is involved, the better, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The, be- the less the government is involved, or any bureaucracy, because frankly, what is an insurance company but just an, another bureaucracy that you've got to fight with? Mm-hmm. Um, can you imagine how tough it would be, and would your son be able to to receive this treatment, or would Laura be able to get uh, the treatment if, in fact, the government was totally in control of all of our health care? But apparently, the, this this idea of what are they calling it? Uh, single payer, single payer, Medicare for all, Medicare for all. They won't, they don't like to say single payer. The Democrats know what is that gal's name again from. Um, Oh, the, the Latino girl, the, the, the new star of the Democrat Party. From New York? From New York. Ocasio-Cortez? Ocasio-Cortez? Yeah. Yeah, this woman. Now, I want to share a clip with you. This is fascinating stuff. I guess she was on CNN last night. On uh, She was on CNN with, uh, what's his name, Cuomo. And uh, he asks her a question about this... Uh, about this Medicare for all, and and he, he actually you'll you'll hear the question here in a moment, and the, but your know, best farts watching her response, um, but but the question basically is uh, you know, how can you how can you possibly fund this Medicare for all? It's it's a it's a it's a great idea, just like communism is a great idea, but it doesn't work because what it does it takes away your freedoms, right? It takes away all of your ability to make decisions on your own, and therefore those in power, the government, make those decisions for you. And he said, even in Vermont, Bernie Sanders has been talking about this. It, it, it could, they couldn't even pass it 
in Vermont, mm -hmm. which is one of the most leftist states in, in the country, because the tax rate would go from 9% to 11%. Mm -hmm. And he points this out. Then she has her response. Goose, do we have that video Yes, clip? we do. Let's check it out, folks, right here on Kern Cast. Then you get into the partisan issue of money, which is, mm -hmm. man, do you want to spend a lot of my tax money on these proposals that you and Bernie and others have? Medicare for all, college tuition, maybe even housing. Uh, that the Green New Deal that you have, it is all very expensive, especially on the single payer side, mm -hmm. and that it gives people sticker shock. Mm -hmm. Even in Bernie's home state, they got sticker shock. They couldn't get it done mm -hmm. in his state because mm -hmm. of how expensive it is. And that was an 11 percent increase in taxes, 9 to 11 percent. Even that was too much for people. How do you pay? How do you sell it? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, the thing that we need to realize is people talk about the sticker shock of Medicare for all. They do not talk about the sticker shock of our of the cost of our existing system. You know, in a Koch brothers funded, uh, you know, study, if any study is going to try to be a little bit slanted, it would be one funded by the Koch brothers. It shows that Medicare for all is actually much more is, is actually much cheaper than the current system that we pay right now. And let's not forget that the reason that the Supreme Court upheld the Affordable Care Act is because they ruled that of these monthly payments that everyday Americans make is a tax. And so while it may not seem like we pay that tax on April 15th, we pay it every single month, or we do pay it tax season if we don't buy, uh, you know, these plans off of the exchange. So we're paying for this system. We Americans have the sticker shock of health care as it is. And what we're also not talking about is why aren't we incorporating the cost of all the funeral expenses of those who die because they can't afford access to health care? That is part of the cost of our system. Why don't we talk about the cost of reduced productivity because of people who need to go on disability, because of people who are not able to participate in our economy, because they have ac because they're having issues like diabetes or or they don't have access to the health care that they need. I think at the end of the day, we see that this is not a pipe dream. Every other developed nation in the world does this. Why can't America? And that is the question that we need to ask. We have done these things before. We write unlimited blank checks for war. We write a two trillion. We just wrote a two trillion dollar check for that tax cut, the GOP tax tax cut and nobody asked those folks how are they going to pay for it so my question is why is it that our pockets are only empty when it comes to education and health care for our kids why are our pockets only empty when we talk about a hundred percent renewable energy that is going to save this planet and allow our children to thrive we only have empty pockets when it comes to the morally right things to do but when it comes to uh, tax cuts for billionaires and when it comes to unlimited war we seem to be able to be to, to invent that num that money very very easily. And to me, it belies a lack of moral priorities that people have right now, especially the Republican Party. Now, the, the, what, <laughs> I, you're right. You're right. Goose is saying during the, during the, the segment there, look at Cuomo's face. Yeah, he's just, he's glazed over a little bit. Even he's not buying it, yeah. and he's a huge lefty. Wait a minute, Medicare for all at what? What's, what? What was the uh, the estimate here recently? Thirty two, some odd trillion dollars. Yeah, something like per, that per year. That's thirty two yeah. trillion a year. Look, I, I I I have no health insurance whatsoever. But when I did, I was paying into. I was paying. Uh, well, my employer paid a portion, and I paid a portion to United Healthcare. That's not a government entity. Mm -hmm. United Healthcare has no ability to tax anyone. But according to uh, uh, Alexandria, what's her name? Ocasio Cortez. Or Casio Cortez. Cortez. Yeah, she thinks that United Healthcare is, is, is taxing us. That we're paying that that's a tax that we're paying every month for uh, for uh, for health care. And uh, and then the funeral comment. Where the hell did that come from? The funeral comment. Well, you know, if we had, if we just had Medicare for all, nobody would ever die, and then you'd never have to pay for 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 funerals. Everyone would live forever, forever. Isn't it great? I saw this um, meme. I have to share this with you. Uh, it's on my Facebook page, I and mean, it's fake, obviously. The quote is, but it, it's coming supposedly from uh, Ortiz. What do you got? God bless it. I can't. Alexandria or Arcasia Cortez. Cortez. Here, here's a, a fake quote, but it's hysterical. 
I'm against studying civics in school unless we also study other cars. I mean, why should we show favoritism towards Honda? <laughs> you know that? But dude, seriously, that is how stupid this woman comes across. And this is the face of the new Democrat Party. We thought Bernie Sanders, crazy Bernie, was a nut. This woman goes beyond being a nut. She's just stupid. And, and by the way, this, I'm sick and tired of hearing these liberals talk about how much tax cuts cost. How much tax cuts cost? What are you talking about? A $2 trillion tax cut does not cost anything. We get the money. We get to keep the money. It's, look, the government only operates with, with how do they get their money other than printing it. How does the government get freaking money? They take it from you and I. They forcibly take it from us. I don't care if it's uh, April 15th or any other time during the year. Some people file quarterly. But they take money for it. They put a gun to your flipping head and demand that you pay them money or they will put you in jail. It's been done. Read some books by Erwin Schiff if you don't understand that. But the fact of the matter is this woman is the face of the Democrat Party, the face of of libtards, libtards, whatever you want to call them, in America today. That's what we're running up against coming this November. It's not going to be, look, uh, some people are saying there's going to be a blue wave, that they're going to take Congress. Even Rush Limbaugh seems to be uh, sounding that way. I don't buy it. I don't either. I don't buy it. And out of the five people that she endorsed, and she flew into Michigan to endorse these Muslim guys running for governor right. and for senator and all that, uh, three out of the five lost miserably this last Tuesday in all those little, you know, uh, special elections they were having. Um, but she's not the only one. Now, you would think if you spend, what does it cost to send a kid to, uh, uh, to an Ivy League school nowadays? What does it cost? Probably 60000 a year? I, I think... Easily. To, to send your kids to Col easily. Columbia think, University. I, I was actually looking at one point when I was going to grad school. I was going to go to grad school. And I looked at USC, and they, it was going to cost me two hundred fifty thousand total. Oh. And Imagine. Uh, think about the money that's wasted sending our kids to colleges. We have a video clip coming up next with one, one of my absolute favorite websites. It's called campusreform.com. If you've never checked up, put it in your favorites. They have videos up, it seems like every every couple of days, new videos. And we have one from Columbia University in New York, where the interviewer is asking the students there, the little millennial students, the little snowflakes, to explain the First Amendment. We've heard that how they distort the Second Amendment. But when we come back from this next break, we're going to play you a clip. You're going to love this of, well, you're not going to. Well, actually, you should be scared. I don't think you should love very it. Very scared. I think you should be very frightened. That's coming up next, a special video from Campus Reform right here on the Jazz McKay Show. This is CurtainCast.com. At the time you were arrested, you were served with a DS-367 temporary driver's license. It's good for 30 days, but if you don't act within 10 days, at the end of those 30 days, your license will be suspended. It's important for your lawyer to contact the DMV for you, set up a driver's license administrative hearing so that your license is not going to suspension. That's something here at Brain Law we do for you. Patriot Bail Bonds has the best customer service in Bakersfield. Patriot has more five-star ratings than any bail company in Kern County. Plus, we're fast and affordable. If you run into the law, make Patriot Bail Bonds your first call. That's right. One call. That's all. If you're in jail, call Patriot Bail. I choose Patriot Bail Bonds. We choose Patriot Bail Bonds. We choose Patriot Bail Bonds. If the best criminal attorneys choose Patriot Bail Bonds, who would you choose? Patriot Bail Bonds. 
We fight for your freedom. Howdy, 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 and uh, we're back. We're back here. This is the Jazz McKay Show. We are live this Thursday afternoon, and we'll remain uh, up on, on uh, KernCast.com and on the, the Facebook, uh, KernCast Facebook page. Uh, and so we ask you to share this video because uh, I think the last show we did had something like uh, 12, 1,300 viewers. Uh, we really appreciate I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you folks are watching these podcasts and uh, and sharing them and enjoying them and I mean that I mean that sincerely yeah, I, from from I, the heart of my bottom I, I can honestly say I'm, I'm jealous because I do two shows and you get more shares than I do Come on. <laughs> well <laughs> I, I tell you what I would like to share if if if, if I could uh, a video with you this afternoon <sighs> that if, if you're if you've got kids in school if you've got I'm not talking about you know elementary school high school whatever but in college if you got kids in college and this is Columbia School of Law by the way where this video was shot really constitutional okay these are these are a couple of these uh, young people are apparently majoring in constitutional law and Cabot uh, Phillips who is this he's a great interviewer he works for campusreform.com released a video this week showing just exactly how clueless these college students are about the First Amendment. What what are, here's the question, and think about this for a moment, what are the five freedoms that are guaranteed us in the First Amendment of the Constitution? There are five freedoms. Can you name them? Because these, could, these kids here uh, at Columbia University could not. Go ahead, go hit it. I'm Calvin Phillips with Campus Reform. Today we're at Columbia University talking to young people about freedom of speech. Is the First Amendment still relevant today? And do people actually know what's in the First Amendment? Let's find out. In the First Amendment of the Constitution, there are five freedoms listed that are protected under the First Amendment. I've got $20 right here if you can name all five. No way I'm naming all five. <laughs> Any come to mind freedoms under the First Amendment? Um... Yo, I have no idea. Can you name the five freedoms protected under the First Amendment? No, I definitely can't. I don't know. Nah, no, I, I can't. You got any? Any? I mean, we can guess. Uh, under the First Amendment. Nah. <sighs> How long do I have? <laughs> Uh, you, you took calm eye, you should be able to do this. <laughs> um, so, freedom of speech, yeah. freedom of the press. Yep. Um, you're the constitutional lawyer here, yeah, man. Dude, you got dude, this. Come dude, on. You gotta do it. Yeah, dude, he's um, singing class in law school right now also. So, dude, uh, <laughs> no pressure, but... Freedom of press. Yep. Free speech. speech. Um, right to bear arms. Is that, is that a different amendment? I think that's a different amendment. That's the second amendment. Okay, yeah, there you go. Now I feel like I need to go home and just read. The right to a jury by your peers? No. Um, then I'm done. <laughs> freedom of the press. Um, freedom of... Um, um, I don't know. I'm sorry. It involves what we're doing right now. All of us like assembled. Oh. oh I have... Freedom of assembly? Oh, freedom of assembly. Oh, like to do like protests and stuff? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, uh, freedom of religion. It's uh, hmm. a really good... I don't know. Okay, so we got to three. That's the most anyone's gotten. Freedom of... No, man. Uh, I think that's You're it. tied for the most so far. No one yeah. has been able to get more than three. Uh, freedom of speech, press, religion. 
We're on a college campus. That's one of the main places people are discussing what ideas should and shouldn't be allowed. Where do you, where do you think the line is on what when something should no longer be protected by the First Amendment? I think the line starts drawing when you get offensive trying to in people's like culture, identity, and what they identify as. I don't think that it's fair for people to use the First Amendment as kind of like you know, an excuse to say whatever they want that's very hurtful and malicious to others. So I Isn't think the Constitution the excuse, though? It really is. Now that you think, like, now that I'm saying it out loud. So I think the line should be if you're intolerant of other groups in a way that makes their opinion seem like less, that's defeating the whole purpose. Who gets to decide what is intolerant, though? Who gets to decide? I don't... It's a pretty arbitrary line, but I think it's less arbitrary to say if you're deeming group less equal. The defining characteristic is respect and safety. So okay. if someone's promoting an ideology that uh, there needs like there needs to be a threshold. At Who gets to decide where that threshold, threshold, is? threshold is? I mean, a- academic communities basically. If you start to like offend someone, it shouldn't. You should stop talking. Okay. And but who gets to decide what the line is between too offensive and not offensive enough? I feel like that's just something you kind of got to judge by yourself. As long as like you're not like disrespecting anyone or making them like feel threatened or uncomfortable with their own like way of living or identifying themselves in society. I think that's... Doesn't, doesn't the Constitution protect my right, though, to make you feel uncomfortable with my words? Uh, up to a point. Like, it depends how uncomfortable you're saying, because the Constitution should also, like, assure, like, safety. And uh, I don't have the right to hurt people, so... You do, though? Yeah, I guess. This is all very tricky. Yeah, you do. Because obviously we know that the Constitution is, I consider it a living organism, so with time, it, it should be evolving and stuff like that. Well,
When 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 uh, when uh, uh, Cabot uh, Phillips asked her, uh, he was kind of prodding the young woman, trying to get her to uh, to say freedom of assembly, and she went, "Oh yeah, protest. That's right." Now, are there limits to free speech? Undoubtedly, there are. We understand that you can't shout fire in a crowded theater, right? Unless there is a fire, <laughs> but, but 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 you can't. Uh, you you can protest. You can assemble. But you can't beat the crap out of people. You can't attack people. You can't throw eggs at them. You can't beat them up. You can't uh, pepper spray people. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to attack. That's assault. That's not protected under the First Amendment, which is something the fascists don't understand. And by the way, when I talk about fascists, I'm talking about the left. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about right wingers. I'm talking about fascists on the left. I'm talking about the fascists in America today, such as where was it in Berkeley? Just uh, was it uh, over the weekend in Berkeley? They arrested like 20 of these Antifa people. The funniest thing in the world, Antifa. Antifa, what is that? Anti-fascist. But yet they're the fascists because they go out in the streets and they break windows, they set fires, they turn over cars, and they beat up people. Thank God we got the Proud Boys taking care of business. We got the Proud Boys out there protecting themselves and the public from these Antifa people. They're not practicing free speech by any stretch of the imagination. They are not. The Antifa people are not practicing something uh, that is protected in this in the First Amendment. In fact, you know the fact of the matter, <laughs> I'm an old man, you know. I just turned 60, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm officially, uh, I don't think I'm officially, am I a senior, uh, senior uh, seasoned uh, citizen? They, I think they changed the terms I think, I think some places it's 55, some places it's 65, some places it's 70. I don't know. I but lost you know, track. don't mess with an old man. I've said this for years. Don't mess with an old man. Don't, 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 uh, don't, don't with me. Because to be perfectly honest with you, I got a lot less to lose than I did in my 20s. Prison for life doesn't mean that much to a guy who's 60 years old, suffering from COPD and all kinds of other physical ailments. But I'll tell you what, brother. Don't forget, those old 60-year-old guys, we're packing heat. I can't run away from a problem, so I'll stand my ground and defend myself any damn time. That's the Second Amendment, by the way. Don't forget that. Uh, wanted to say hi to uh, who, who's listening to us this afternoon. We have Susan Guns, uh, Ilyu uh, Garcia, I believe. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Il Ilyu. Also, Bob Glenn. There's a few others. How many? Who have I missed? Who did I leave out? Denise Roy Hand. Denise Roy Hand. Thank you for listening, Denise. Everybody out there who's uh, watching us here. And like I said, don't forget to share this video on Facebook with all of your friends, everyone you know. Um, what is the latest goose on uh, the Donald Trump star? They voted to remove. Well, here's the thing. Well, who was it that voted? It was the city council of what city? I think it was West Hollywood. Okay. I believe it was West Hollywood. West Hollywood. Hollywood. That is a city. Yes. Hollywood itself is a part of Los Angeles. It's a neighborhood. Well, let me just run run something up the flagpole here. Um, I think it was the city of West. It was either West LA. No, West LA is LA. So it'd be West Hollywood. That's an actual yeah. city because they have a West. They have a police department in West Hollywood. And they have a mayor. I remember when Rodney Bingenheimer com, com, appointed himself mayor of Hollywood that, back in the seventies. See, this was uh, actually this was uh, the seventh. So this was two days ago. And it says here the marker that has been pummeled by a pickaxe and a sledgehammer. But now the West Hollywood City Council has voted to remove President Trump's star from the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> I love this because West Hollywood has absolutely no power to do anything. This is like when any freaking city council anywhere in the country votes ceremoniously, they say. They take time to debate and vote on something like uh, uh, f sending aid to Israel. Who gives a rat's ass what the city of West Hollywood thinks or says? They voted unanimously to remove Donald Trump's star from the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Wait, wait, but they have no power to do they that. They have no power to do that. No, they really don't. And I would like to ask this question. 
Where's the guy with the pickaxe removing Kevin Spacey's star from the Hollywood Walk of Fame? You know what's interesting? And, and or Bill Cosby? Well, you know what's interesting is that uh, Denise Geary was talking yeah. about just as had the, either yesterday or the day before. And she she had actually reported and found out that Donald Trump's star is actually right next to Kevin Spacey's. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 Bill Cosby, do we not all understand that Bill Cosby raped, we don't even know. How, many, how about Harvey Weinstein? He's got a star on Hollywood Boulevard. Yes, he does. He's been accused in court. Bill Cosby's been accused in court. Now, what was the reason that the uh, city of West Hollywood voted to remove Donald Trump's star? Don't bother looking it up, Goose, I'll tell you. Okay. Because of his abhorrent treatment of women. Yes, that's exactly what it says here. Because of his abhorrent treatment of again, this is the Democrat Party, folks. These are the liberals. You know what you have to do to be a liberal nowadays? I mean, it used to be in the days of uh, people like Adlai Stevenson and, uh, and John F. Kennedy, liberals were, they were um, all in all, they were basically good people. They weren't commies. They weren't commies by any stretch of the imagination. But today, they're not only commies, but in order to become a liberal today, you got to take a drill and drill through your head and then bend your head this way so all your brains drip out, just drip by drip by drip. What is possessing these idiots on the, uh, uh, the uh, West Hollywood City Council to claim that Donald Trump's abhorrent treatment of women warrants his star being removed from the Hollywood Walk of Fame, when Donald Trump has never even, not once, been accused, seriously accused, of molesting, raping, uh, sexually assaulting anybody. Now, Kevin Spacey, we can say, all right, Kevin Spacey never assaulted a woman, but he sure as hell assaulted 14-year-old boys, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And Bill Cosby, how many women did he slip a roofie to and then stoop them? How many people has Har how many women has Harvey Weinstein stooped without their consent? But their stars remain. But yet Donald Trump's star should be removed. That's liberalism in a nutshell. It truly is a mental disorder. We have to we have to do something for these people in West Hollywood at the city council. They really need to get a life. They really do. For them to spend a week debating this and then voting on it. There must be no trouble in West Hollywood. There must be no gang problems, no, no crime, no homelessness, no defecation in the streets, nothing like that for them to be concerned with. No, no potholes, no traffic lights that aren't operating. They must have nothing else to do but spend their time debating on whether or not Donald Trump is abhorrently treating women. Uh, so therefore, they need a life. <laughs> and Goose and I are prepared. We're going to put together a search party to go in search of the lives of those those numb nuts, those idiots, in the uh, in the West Hollywood City Council. Now, Los Angeles City or County have they said anything? I mean, it's it's LA I, City I, property. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. I, I, I as they were saying, this is not the first time his star has been. Yeah, it was it was vandalized. Been, been this. And it, it they just put a new one in. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's part of it's part of the you know, walk. Honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, this isn't such a bad idea. Removing Donald Trump's star. Actually, you know, I'm in favor of. He deserves better than to have his star next to Kevin Spacey's and just two blocks from Bill Cosby's mm -hmm. and Harvey Weinstein's and all the other freakazoids that inhabit that uh, so-called tensile town. Put him on Mount Rushmore. That's a better idea right there. Let's start a campaign right now to put Donald Trump's face on Mount Rushmore. Who could we replace? Well, let's see. You've got... Uh, I, I think you just add him. You just add him you over on the side. on the side. Or maybe just below. Just, just over to the side. Yeah. Let's, get the, let's get the pickaxes. <laughs> but let's get these guys who want to pickaxe his star and send him up to the side of Mount Rushmore. We'll lower down on bungee cords, <laughs> right? And give him some pickaxes to start carving Donald Trump's face into Mount Rushmore. 
That's the that's the punishment they should. Uh, that's what they so richly deserve. We'll be right back with more government overreach beyond the pale. That's next right here on the Jazz McKay Show at TurnCast.com. At the time you were arrested, you were served with a DS-367 temporary driver's license. It's good for 30 days, but if you don't act within 10 days, at the end of those 30 days, your license will be suspended. It's important for your lawyer to contact the DMV for you, set up a driver's license administrative hearing so that your license is not going to suspension. That's something here at Braymer Law we do for you. Alexandria, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Do you have any experience that qualifies you for this job? I was growing up during the, the Clinton era. Um, and then basically when I was in middle school, 9-11 happened. Do you have any knowledge whatsoever about how our political system works? Mm. Yikes. Does that make you... A, l a little bit nervous? Put socialism into your own words. Unprecedented concentration of wealth at the very top, tippy top of the 1%. Wow, I'm, I'm kind of surprised to hear you admit that. It, it sounds like what's going on in socialist Venezuela. Mm -hmm. What do you think about what's going on in Venezuela? Just an, an increasing crisis of humanitarian condition. And to me, it would just be completely unacceptable if that happened on our shores. Well, couldn't that happen here if, if we adopted socialism? It's hard to say what direction that that takes. I am not the expert on geopolitics. Didn't you major in international relations in college? Middle Eastern politics is not exactly what's at my kitchen table every night. Venezuela is not in the Middle East. I may not use the right words. <laughs> <laughs> How do you respond to the people who say that socialism has never worked? Capitalism was the most efficient and best economy, perhaps. Abject poverty is at the lowest level it's ever been because of capitalism. Well, I, th I think the numbers that you just talked about is part of the problem. I, I don't understand. Oh, um, So what do you hope to accomplish when you're in Congress? This is a really good question. So what is it? I just think that that's the wrong question. Okay. So why should voters vote for you? You vote. It's, it's democratic. Well, this has been enlightening. Thank you so much for coming on. That was uh, Allie Beth Stockley. She's with CRTV and a number of other... She used to be with Breitbart, I think, for a while. Allie Beth Stockley interviewing Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. All right, it's a fake interview. It was a, it was a, 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 a chop, a cut and It's the job. funniest shit. But it's funny. As, <laughs> it, it is. It is. It's funny as hell. The best part about it, though, is the response... Oh, my from people on Facebook. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to embarrass him. He's not even a friend of mine. I don't know how it happens that he's able to... Uh, he writes for, at least he used to write for the newspaper, the show remain nameless. <clears throat> but he jumps... When I posted that on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, 
He chimed in, fake news, fake news. That's a fake interview. That's a fake interview. It's funny. <laughs> Who cares if it's fake? It's still funny. The left can do things like that all the time, but God forbid a conservative like uh, Ellie Beth Suckley could, would, would do something. Oh, that's egregious. How you, you deliberately made her look stupid. Hey, she's doing a pretty damn good job of it on her own. That uh, Alexia Ocasio, uh, I don't know, Cortez. All right, now this has got me pissed. In my stack of stuff, I have an article here from WJLA in Maryland, and this is about a woman that uh, lives in Prince George's County. Now, she is 91 years old, and her name is Evelyn Strail. Prince George's County filed a legal case against a couple in their 90s what? over a wheelchair ramp. What? They put a wheelchair ramp in their home, and apparently it was not approved. They did not get permission from the county to build a wheelchair ramp in order for... Evelyn, who's in a wheelchair, to get out of her house, down the ramp. It's a. It, I saw the picture of this ramp. It was beautiful. It was built by her son, who's a contractor, by the way. Beautiful ramp, because there's like four, four little steps, concrete stairs, coming out of her house. So her son builds this nice wooden ramp with rails on either side, coming down and then making a, a, a slight right turn to the driveway mm -hmm. so that she can get out of the house. Well, they, uh, the, the county there said that Evelyn's uh, uh, wheelchair ramp was illegal. And that if she didn't uh, tear it down, they were going to fine her and her husband, uh, David, who is 94 years old, by the way. Two people had to put in a wheelchair ramp uh, because uh, otherwise they'd have to lift her in the wheelchair down the steps. So her son who is a, uh, who is a uh, contractor. Well, first of all, they, they, they looked at having it done by someone else, and it was going to cost something like $10,000. Oh, yeah. It was ridiculous. So her son goes to Home Depot. He gets a whole bunch of lumber and comes over on a weekend, builds the ramp. And it was, it was beautiful. It looked, like, uh, it looked like something you would see those guys do uh, you know, on HGTV in somebody's backyard putting in a deck and all that. It looked great. A pile of lumber is all now, though, that remains of Evelyn's wheelchair ramp in the front yard. Apparently a pile of lumber just stacked up over They're fine with that. The freaking county's not. Yeah. Am I yelling too loud? But this no, is going to be really, really, <laughs> really steamed here. A pile of lumber is all that remains of the wheelchair ramp that gave Evelyn the freedom to leave her home. It clips my wings. I can't do anything, said Evelyn. Her son Bob built the ramp. He's a construction. He's in the construction business. Uh, he didn't want his parents to pay ten thousand dollars for a ramp. He built it for seventeen hundred bucks, right? And then the county inspector came that by. Although the county inspector agreed that it was built very well, they didn't have a permit. They didn't ask permission from the government. Uh, can I add, whose house is this? It is Evelyn and David's house. So it's their house. It's their house. And I was always under the assumption that if it was your house, you could put whatever damn thing you want on your house. For the most part... <laughs> Okay. At least here in, basically, unless you're in a, a you know a subdivision, with a, what are they called the, the, uh, um, the homeowners, homeowners association. association HOA, yeah. those people are Nazis too. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> if you're a member of a homeowners, you know what we need to take over homeowners association. <laughs> Bunch of conservatives, libertarians, good people need to take over. Um, this is the same thing as, as, as we hear about when somebody puts up a flagpole. Oh, I know. Or they hang a flag, what was it, two or three years ago, uh, a veteran, a Marine, a Rocky oh. veteran, living in a condo, hangs a flag inside his condominium. It was on the second floor, and he hangs the flag inside of the sliding glass door. Hangs an American yeah. flag, properly displayed, I might add, from inside. Inside, but... There was a complaint. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. one of the tenets of uh, this condominium unit, this about four years ago, is a Muslim and yeah. found the flag to be offensive. And so he was forced to I take it I remember that story. Remember that? I remember that story. A disabled Iraqi war veteran yeah. was forced to remove. Prince George's County's inspectors came. There was an inspector, this is according to, uh, to her son, Bob Strahel, who said uh, there was an inspector. He showed up twice when I was here, and I asked him why couldn't he just inspect it and tell me if there was anything wrong that I needed to do to make improvements. He said, no way. He wasn't, in the, he wasn't there to uh, inspect it. He was there to tell us to tear it down. Bob submitted then plans that he had drawn out because he's a professional contractor. He drew up plans. That's something that you do in the contracting. But he submitted the plans and tried to file for a permit, but was denied because he built the ramp before asking the government. Prince George's County mailed an order to his parents demanding that they show to the district court, that they show up in district court on May 16th. The county sought compliance with building code. The order warned in bold lettering that if you fail to comply with this default order, you will be subject to fines and imprisonment. They're going to put a 91-year-old woman and her 94-year-old husband into jail for not removing this wheelchair ramp in front of their house. And now the county's perfectly fine with a seven and a half foot high pile of lumber, lumber yeah. in their front yard. But you've got to get permission. Talk about government overreach. Mm. We, we hear it, this it, way too often. And where is Prince George's County again? In Maryland. Oh, no wonder. Yeah, it's in Maryland. Another, Another bastion of yeah. liberal uh, retardedness. Can I say that? Another... What we call it, we call it regressive. Liberal? Yeah, not regressive. progressive, but regressive. Regressive. I gotta ask a question. What has Obama done lately, other than trying desperately using uh, the deep state to undermine he, the Trump administration? He, he, him and his wife, they were at a Beyonce concert where they danced. <laughs> he got caught on video dancing. That's where they've been. Well, apparently, he's won another peace prize. For what? That's a damn good question. <laughs> According to the Daily Caller, President Obama has received another peace prize. The former president has been named the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Ripple of Hope Laureate. This was uh, Monday of this week. The award honors those who, quote, work toward more a more just and peaceful world. Trump drops bombs on the Russians, and he's called a Russian pawn. Trump passes sanctions against Russia, and he's called a Russian pawn. Yeah. Obama uses a drone to kill a 16-year-old American in Afghanistan, and he's a hero and deserves a Nobel Peace Prize, and now the Robert Kennedy Award for Peace and Hope, and all the wonderful things that President Obama is doing now that he's out of office. Uh... What did he do? For what now? What? For what? <laughs> Obama responded that Kennedy was one of my favorite heroes. Bobby Kennedy is one of my favorite heroes. He has, he was someone who showed us the, the power of acting on our ideals, the idea that any of us can be one of a million different centers of energy and death. What the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh this is just, the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> We well, went on, but it made less sense, so I don't know. I feel bad about insulting a former president. Yeah, not really. No. I wanted to uh, drop these on you real quick here. You know, I, I'm an animal lover. Yeah. Uh, uh, all animals, preferably dogs, <laughs> more than cats, but I love all animals. Uh, we have a couple of things going on. First of all, Kern County Animal Services is offering tomorrow pet adoptions for $5. $5 pet adoptions. Uh, they said on Facebook, our kennels are full and we need to find great homes for our amazing shelter pets. All ready to go animals are fixed. Now this is, uh, the, 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 the animals are fixed. They're vaccinated. Uh, they're microchipped. They'll put your information into the animal. 
Uh, the shelter also provides licenses for those of us living in the county. The shelter, in case you're wondering, is on Fruitvale Avenue. The Kern County uh, Animal Services is located at 3951 Fruitvale Avenue. They're open tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Here's the phone number if you want more information, 868-7100. 868-7100, and that is for $5 Fridays, and that's tomorrow. Not to be outdone, the city says, we'll do you one better. We'll give you a free dog in their Clear the Shelters event, which is uh, from uh, on August 18th. That's coming up in two weeks, week and a half. The event is from 8 a.m. till 2 p.m., August 18th at 201 South Mount Vernon Avenue. All adoption fees are waived for the event. They will have games, food, and music, and the city hopes that, to find many homes. So I think that's that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Let's get as many homes for these animals as possible. I think charging a little bit mm -hmm. is better than charging nothing. It's just my personal opinion. I, I think we, you value something more if you pay something for we it. We actually got one of our dogs through one of the one of those events at the uh, the one on Fruitvale. Oh, Fruitvale, Kern County Animal Kern County. Services. Yeah. Great group of folks over there. Uh, really, I can't I can't say enough about all, everyone who works there, the employees and the uh, and, and the volunteers as well. Well, that is going to wrap up our show today. The Jazz McKay program is brought to you every week by my mouth, one convenient location right here on KernCast.com. Remember, God bless America, and I'll see ya. Thank <laughs> you.